It is our three o'clock fun time to learn something new. Today is with Mr. Patrick Cusick, my brother from another mother. Today he's going to show us how to create with concrete. I just want to give everyone a warning. It's addicting, but I know you've heard me say this before. <laughs> it is really fun to do. And you'll, and it's, I think it's a good economic, easy way in to just starting to play, especially summertime. You can do it outside, whatever. It's just really fabulous. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, so, but first, let me give you um, a coupon code. You're, well, you'll see, but I bet you're going to be wanting to learn it all. Write that down, Concrete20. Over at craftcast.com, you can get um, Patrick's full class. I don't know. It's like two hours of stuff. Um, and all kinds of different goodies. Uh, if you're interested, this is a great way to find out. And he shows you how to color it, how to do, I want to call it sort of, what's it called, Patrick? Not tie-dye, but ombre. Um, um, and ombre. Tie -dye. And tie-dye, yeah. How to do all kinds of fun things with it. Um, I got hooked in very fast because <laughs> it's really <laughs> fun. It's one of, you know how sometimes you just want to, uh, something that fast result you don't want to relearn everything and spend you know eight weeks in a class learning skills this you can get going really fast and get really fabulous results uh i'm going to show you at the end what i made you'll see so write that down and then the other thing is that's what we're going to see today it's very exciting um we also though have which i'm thrilled to say those i just like to say again those are concrete in different um ring settings we have over at Cool Tools a kit that we've put together, and um, Misty will put the link in the um, uh, in the chat box there, where we already put in, and you'll see a picture of it, and it's in your handout in the second page. The concrete is there, the little cups and the and the um, sticks to mix with, and then all the colors to add in, and it's a great kit. I tried it, and guess what? I love that you have all the cups that you need and all the sticks as well, just saying. So it was really fun. But with that, I'm turning the class over to Mr. Patrick Cusick, who's going to walk us through how to do this. Oh, I forgot one other thing. The kit is for the class. If you want to make today's project, which is the ring, when you're looking at the kit, look below and you can add on a ring base. You'll see it. I happen to know, checking with Cool Tools, they don't have tons of the one Patrick is using today, but there are other choices. But if you want that exact one, order your kit right away because yeah. I know people are going to want it. So with that, thank you, Patrick, for showing us more fun things to be addicted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me again, Allison. It's great to be here as usual. Um, yeah, it's really great to have those CraftCast kits put, I mean, the um, Cool Tools kits to put together and it's just really convenient for people it is. so i, I yeah. appreciate that um, well in the old days patrick we used to do a class and then we put in the handout like 20 different links to buy every different little thing because <laughs> there wasn't any other way so right. this makes it easier so so we love yeah, it. i started working with the concrete uh, and just you know, like Allison said, just sort of became addicted to what you could do with it. It's really inexpensive and, you know, especially compared to silver and also concrete. The perception is that it's a very heavy material, but it's actually in this small quantity. It's actually very lightweight. It's actually more light, more lightweight than metal is. So um, it's kind of an interesting thing and it's great. It's easy to do. And what you're looking at here are pre-made uh, rings from Cool Tools. And uh, I, I did this because I wanted something that was quick and fast. And I, I wanted to experiment and feel free to experiment without getting bogged down by actually making the ring because I would start from scratch and I would make the ring and I would make the, you know, mix in the concrete and do all that stuff for me to set down the design portion of it and set that aside and not think about the design. What it did is it allowed me to focus completely on the concrete, focus on how to mix it, you know, how to color it. What does the color do when I mix it? What different types of colorants will I use? What can I embed in it? And what types of surface treatments can I give? And that was a lot. <laughs> right. So I didn't need the extra, extra stress of just creating, you know, creating the ring itself. But I got these on Cool Tools and they're great because they're adjustable and, um, you know, you can fill they're them fun. up. They're fun. 
whatever you want to. You can fill it with resin and yeah. it's just fun. So They're fun do- without oh. having to, um, you know, make something perfect. Uh, you'll see mine later on. I was very pleased with it and it's really easy. Let me just do a quick answer to a question. Ethel, just ask, just send an email. I'm really sorry. I can't remember if they send to the UK. I think they do, but I don't remember to give you a, a definite answer. If you don't hear from cool tools, just write us at support at craftcast.com. I'll get it answered for you from Rhonda who runs it. Um, all right. So here, we, do you want me to start the video? Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm forgetting which, <laughs> right. which these are in. Yes. We love. Yeah. So, to get this to uh, work properly, uh, these are the, the rings from Cool Tools. And you can see the number on there if you want to order it. They are adjustable. Uh, these are just fun little rings. They're not going to last forever. Um, and it's just a fun thing to have and experiment with. But you can notice at the bottom, there's no bottom to it. So what we need to do is we need to actually create a bottom to hold this together. Now to do this properly, what we do is we have these little um, these little tabs that are in the ring. And those tabs are important because what they will do is they will hold the concrete in by giving it a mechanical connection. So if you can imagine that this is the tab, the concrete forms around it and then it can't move anywhere. So um, it's really, you know, really good thing to have that in there for stability. And what I need to do is I need to measure uh, first, because what I'm going to do is create a nice round disc out of cardstock. And so uh, I'll just take my calipers and then just start to measure. Right now, I'm just measuring the outside distance. Uh, and then what I'll do is just sort of make a guess as to how thick that, you know, how thick the metal is on the sides. I could go in and I could measure it and all that kind of stuff. But I just went in and just, you know, did this really you know, just did it really fast to see how tolerant it would be. So uh, here I am at the measurements and it looks like it was 17.5 millimeters approximately. Yep. And now that's just for this one. There are different styles of rings out there. So you're going to have to measure the rings and measure, measure the shape. But what I did, I just went to my computer and I printed out 17.5 millimeter discs and I just cut them out. And, uh, you know, when you're cutting things out, if you want to create something that's round, obviously you can do it just like I'm doing it here. Uh, but eventually what will happen is you'll get to the very end and there'll be a little sharp point to that. And as you come around, I'm just going to nibble those points off and m- make that shape nice and round. You can see that little point right there. So that's you're, just got to You're good off. with the scissors, honey. I use the I used my silhouette of my cricket and cut out circles. Yeah. Well, actually I did as well. Okay. I wanted wanted to see how that worked. And so it was super easy just to go into the, um, you know, to any software, create a circle 7.5 millimeters, save it as an SGV and then print it out. Like I have a Glowforge and a cricket, but I printed it out of my Glowforge. Um, And there's the, there you go. You could do it either way. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Actually, it's, it's pretty tolerant. So these are going to hold the concrete in. And what's important about this is that you need to set this this, uh, piece of paper on what I'm going to call the bottom of the bezel. Now, that tab that I was talking about, you have to make sure that you're not covering that tab. It needs to be on the bottom portion of that tab because when we fill it up, that tab is gonna grab onto the concrete. So you can see when I hold it sideways, there's that little tab that's right in there. And that's exactly where I want the paper to be is to be below that tab. Now there's space for the concrete. Yeah, that'll leave the space for the concrete. In in essence, what we're doing is we're making a bezel, uh, the bottom of the Back bezel. Sheet. Right. Yeah. And uh, so again, just make sure there. I uh, think there's four of these little uh, tabs in there. So make sure that all of them are exposed, and make sure that the paper disc is on the bottom part of that. And you can. You can, if you do that, that's the wrong. I just wanted to show you what's wrong. And if that happens, you just go ahead and take your fingers and you can just pop that disc right out and, you know, place it back in correctly. It's really easy to do. 
And I'm going to yeah. share something. You know what I did, Patrick. I cut it out of some glitter paper so that it was <laughs> glittery in the back. So depending on the um, depending on the uh, how you mix the concrete, sometimes the concrete is a little bit runnier. Sometimes it's a little bit thicker. So my thought was if I did a runny mixture, I would need to seal up all the little cracks and crevices with some paper, some tape. And so you can see here, I did that. And um, turns out, I'll show you in a sec, but turns out I didn't need to. Uh, the concrete that we're using is going to be uh, this Create Recklessly Artist's Concrete. Uh, and I also use this rockite, which is technically a cement. Uh, and so the difference is, is that the, the concrete has more aggregate in it. Now, this artist concrete, Robert did a really good job at formulating this. And so one of the things is that if you were to go to the hardware store and buy a big bag of concrete, you'd get exactly the same type of mixture that you would get in here. But the difference would be in the aggregate. A lot of times the aggregate is so large, you know, it's like that big. And when you're making jewelry sized things, you want that aggregate to be nice and small. So that's one of the benefits of using this artist concrete is that that aggregate is nice and small and you can get that beautiful concrete texture if you want to. Uh, one of the things that I found versatile concrete was is that you can get a beautiful, smooth surface or you can expose the aggregate. Okay, the next one. You know what, Patrick, also, well, I found that just Robert's the Create Recklessly Concrete, you can, that goes a long way. That's, yes. a, huge, that's a huge box from the hardware <laughs> store. <laughs> You're making a thousands. A yeah, so. All right, yeah. but we Roberts just like is, Roberts is a lot. I mean, I don't even know how many. If I, I don't even know how many rings I could do with. It's a lot. Artist concrete, but it's yeah, definitely it's a, a lot. Yeah. So. And it's, okay. It, what's next? Ah, then so here's what you need to mix it up. Uh, there's also uh, the kit that's by Cool Tools. I happen to have all this stuff already, and uh, just some measuring spoons, a stir stick, disposable cup. Uh, the yellow is actually. Uh, a little tiny scoop that I bought to measure the colorant. I'll be talking about that, but it needs to be a real tiny amount. And then I have a file that I'll be using in the uh, after it's cured. And this is just, you know, it's not a new file. It's just a trash file that I had. Uh, and because it's going to be shaving concrete, I didn't want to use a, a new file or a good file, just anything that has, uh, you know, this one has a couple of grits on it. So it's really kind of nice to have. Say, Patrick, so, you also use, maybe it's in the full class, but maybe you'll show us here. You use those little pipettes, and that was great. Yes, yes. The other thing that you need that's not shown here is a mask for the mixing. Part. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Concrete yep. is, uh, you know, is is uh, toxic or you're not toxic, but can be an irritant to your lungs. You don't want to breathe it while you are stirring it, but it's only during the stirring process after you're done stirring it and mixing it, it's perfectly fine. You can take your mask off. So we also uh, have some mask lying around, I think from lots of fun times. So check one <laughs> out. So uh, in, in the video, I talk step-by-step step how to mix it. And I, I give a, uh, instructions on, you know, the importance of, you know, the, the right uh, way to mix the ingredients and the right uh, steps in which you should put the ingredients in the cup. But you can kind of see that this is a little bit thick. It's like a, a mixed up, like a, almost like a peanut butter mm -hmm, consistency. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can do whatever you want with the consistently have it really be liquid or have it be a little bit thicker. It just depends on what you're going to do with the final outcome. And I'm just going to take my popsicle stick here. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing down and I'm using it almost like a screed to, you know, pull that concrete and make it nice and level. Uh, and any of the concrete that's on the side, I'm just sort of taking that off and using a clean finger. Uh, that will eventually, even if it dries on there, that that will pop right off. And um, that's not a problem. So you'll see here what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it on the table. And what that does is that settles the concrete and it brings any bubbles up to the surface so that they dissipate. And then what you'll do is you'll have a nice smooth surface on top. I'll use a safe uh, clothespin to make sure that it's held in position. And then that way, when it dries, it doesn't dry uh, crooked. You want to make sure that your tables are level 
and that you're drying it on a level surface because if your uh, concrete is liquidy, it will follow whatever the level of the table is. So just be aware of that. So here it is when it's cured. You can see it has a nice smooth surface, beautiful color. This is like, I don't know, a nice blue, I don't know, cornflower color, I guess yeah, I would call it. That's one of the colors in the kit. I You get a whole bunch of colors in the kit. I forget. A, and the colors are a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're this beautiful. Is the simplest, this is the simplest form, and it dries quickly. Uh, it dries within 20 minutes, and, um, you know, you can start experimenting from here. Well, you'll see. And if you get the full class, you can see all the fun things you can have. This is just fun to show what's possible with these little rings. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the aggregate there poking through. And then in the next one. Which I love. I love how that looks like the beach. Yep. It's a fun thing. Oh, yeah, that's great. So this one is an experiment that I did uh, with my laser cutter. I was actually able to etch this concrete, and it's just an experiment and, you know, just something to see if I could do it. But now that I know that it can be done etching on concrete, that's uh, crazy. it opens a whole world of possibilities, right? Do you and use the Glowforge to etch that time? I use the Glowforge, yes. Yep. Oh my and God, it, Patrick. You know, because you can etch into rocks and you can etch into glass. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, this is kind of a rock. And I, and to be honest mm -hmm. with you, I just used the same settings that I used when I etched a rock. Uh, so, And you um, etched it after it was done, obviously, in the ring and all of after that. After it was cured, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh my gosh. This is what I mean with possibilities. You could also have made a template to put on top of that, that you cut out of even a cricket or something that way and layer it on top. Oh yeah, definitely layer it. You know, if you go, oh, you can't go back. Um, no. I was just say, after I etched it out, I could have gone in with a, another concrete and then screeted it and then have that concrete fill in what oh, I etched out. And a second color. Yeah. 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 <gasps> A couple of oh, wait, hold on. There are some of the oh. colors, but Misty just put in the chat box the nine colors you get in that kit. So if, if you guys are thinking, what awesome. colors do I love? There you go. And they're really, That's really saturated um, powdered pigments that you can get and mix in. And uh, you can mix and match and all that stuff. Okay, next. Wait, let's take a quick question, Mr. Patrick. Lisa said, have you ever used a metal clay texture mat on your concrete? Actually, I have, and if I remember correctly, we, I think we have a sample of that. Okay, good. Up. I think. Um, Liz, not, we're checking on the UK um, from Cool Tools. Right, just actually go on Cool Tools and just send a quick email over to Rhonda. I wish she was on; we could ask her. Um, I just can't remember. I'm sorry. I think so. Oh, they do. They do. They ship internationally. There we go, guys. Yay! I know because you don't want to like see it, and then I want to buy yeah. it. Yeah, I want to buy it now. In terms now. of colorant, this is the powdered concrete colorant. Uh, but you can see here, I've also done, I've also used uh, some alcohol inks as well. So you can use alcohol inks in the concrete to create these colors. And it you can make a lot of colors. And you can see what I've done here is I've used the popsicle sticks to hold them level. And I've also written down the formula that I used for that. And uh you know, you can see on the right hand side the the yellow one has little inclusions included and in the upper right as well. You can see those inclusions. We're going to talk about that as well. If you look at that, um, the red one on the upper left hand side, you can kind of see how it looks a little bit modeled. And um, I talk about that and how to get that effect in the video. And basically, it's just using alcohol ink and, um, you know, using a tool to make that happen. So. And Next. if you're excited about doing this, Patrick goes into all the things on that table, how to do it all, shows you all his experiments. You'll be like how I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to do this. I mean, the colors are exquisite. It's really crazy what the possibilities are. Here we are. So these are rubber stamps that these were made uh, using the rubber stamps uh, that we use for metal clay. And... I was doing this because once I started to get my color formulas, I really realized that I needed to keep track of these colors. <laughs> and so I decided to make uh, some color samples. And then what I'll do is on the back, I've written the formulas that I use to get these colors. 
And I didn't know what was going to happen. I've not textured concrete. I heard it can be done. I didn't see why it couldn't be done. And, um, you know, the, these were really great to be able to, to do. So let's move on. These to the are, next. Those are so pretty. We're all enjoying oh, staring at them. The color fade in the concrete. I haven't experienced that um, in the concrete. Uh, but if they, if you have experienced that they've been fading, I imagine that they probably would fade when they're exposed to light and so on and so forth. You know, the concrete, it's pretty, uh, pretty stable. So I would really have to see long term what would happen. Yeah, because we see concrete in buildings and things color. Yeah. So um, and, yeah. I would imagine that uh, if that's a concern, go with the powdered more than the alcohol inks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know, right? Getting excited. I can tell by the questions. So here's another one. I've, I've mixed up some yellow here. And this color, uh, you know, you have yellow in the in the powdered mix, but you can also use something that all the jewelers, you know, have around is yellow ochre. And so I can use yellow ochre to get this almost same sort of yellowish color. And, and uh, you know, that's another good thing to think about. And I'm just going to tap it here just to level it out a little bit. And this is what I call aggregate washing. And I'm just going to spray water directly on. And what this will do is this will take off the top layer of the concrete. And the, the, what will happen is, is that it will take off the top layer of the concrete and then it'll expose the aggregate that's underneath it. So it really, really looks like that concrete and, um, you know, that concrete that you're walking on. Right. And there's a couple of ways to do this. I found that this is the easiest way to do this is with this uh, aggregate washing is what I call it. Um, but you can also wait until a skin develops on the surface of your concrete. And then you can take uh, a brush and scrape off that, that skin, and then you'll get the same sort of effect. But I think this is much easier and it's much more uh, controlled in this environment. And you can see all that aggregate that's that's in there. Yeah, it's so pretty. I love mm -hmm. that. Um, and that one. That one, yeah. It got That one got some of the really pretty sort of, I don't know, the that beige color in there and you know the, the photo isn't doing this any justice but you know some of the some of the aggregate is just like they're just beautiful little little pieces of rocks yeah you know? it's the beach is what i think and we were talking about too um druzy yeah, vibes i, I agree donna um we were talking about how sometimes it's fine just to have the old fashioned cocktail rings, things that you just wear for fun when you're dressed up it's not precious metal it's not you know it's just fun and i think I think this, that's what these are. Um, and to me, it, you know, it can look like anything, but right now, because it's summer here, it looks like summertime to me. Um, can you embed items? You can. Oh, yeah. yeah. Going over that. So you can mold these items as well. And you can kind of see how I did that. Um, this piece right here, you know, I, I, I put the concrete in the mold, I let it dry, and then I took those files from the very beginning, and I just filed each edge of that, and then I put it in, in this pre-made bezel. And again, I'm using these just for my experiments, just to see how, the con how I can work with the concrete and so on and so forth. But, you know, and these ended up looking so good, it, you know, I could possibly s sell some of these if I wanted to. People have certainly ex expressed an interest in buying one of them. So yeah. Kind of, it's kind of fun, uh, but it's really versatile. Let's go to the next one, please. I know I love all those molds. I made tons of little flowers. I used all the flower molds we had. Oh yeah, those are great. Yeah, these are great. So you can see here, so the, um, the second one in is the yellow ochre. It's a little bit lighter. Mm. And the third one in is just the regular concrete. But this is great. These were just some... Um, you know, mold that I got off of wherever I got it off of Amazon or something. And I was just trying to see, you know, what is, what do things look like in three dimension? How do I incorporate this with jewelry? You know, how does this happen in, in a little bit larger scale? Uh, and it's all just part of my process of experimentation. And even though these aren't something that I can sell, it certainly informs what I can do with the product so that when I have ideas, I can say, oh yeah, I right. remember I molded. Right. So Yeah. 
it's um, it, what's funny too, Patrick, is you look at this and you don't think, oh, that just looks like some old concrete. It, what you look at it and go, that's so pretty. What is it? <laughs> it's a sculpture, right? I mean, it yeah. goes from concrete to being a sculpture and just yeah. it's fascinating. Um, here's what else I've used uh, in terms of molds are these little fondant molds. Now, this is art clay uh, bronze. And uh, what I did was I just pushed it into the mold, I let it dry, and then I just sort of popped it out. And then you'll see in the next slide, um, the next slide, see, I'm dating myself, Alice. Uh, yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> That's what that looks like. So after it's polished up and, you know, I fired it and polished it up, I just have a component. And then what I did was I filled in the, you know, the, the bezel with the concrete and then gently placed in the, the brass component or bronze component and leveled it out and so on and so forth. And then that's what I ended up getting. I really love this include, you know, the inclusions are really the, one of the most fun oh, yeah. things to do. Now oh, yeah. you'll, you'll notice on the bottom, there's the two pearls that are, you know, hanging down. And what I did was I ended up modifying that pre-made component, that, that bezel tray. And I put a couple of holes in there. I thread the the silver through, and then I made those two pieces, you know, with the with the pearl on them, and then I filled the whole thing up. So it's all kept in place by the concrete. Yeah. No, it's um. Are you guys getting addicted yet? It's the possibilities. Wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, in the course, in the original course, I go, you know, through all of these, and you know how to how to get. Uh, different ways to embed things into the concrete. The most important thing that you need to know is that the that blah, blah, the concrete, uh, when you embed things into it, it needs to have a mechanical connection, something to hold it together. Just like the tab I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, we need to have something for these pieces to hold onto. And so you have to sort of think through that. Uh, and so all these pieces are just embedded, uh, either, uh, they were plain embedded just like as they are, because, uh, for instance, on the black one, that's actually a bead. And so since that bead has a hole in it, that's good. I don't need to have any mechanical connection because I can put the concrete in the holes and that'll hold the whole thing together. And as long as I embed it deep enough, that's going to create the mechanical connection. I love it for just featuring one bead. It's so fun. Uh, Patrick goes everybody into has how, random beads, you know, everybody has yeah. a oh. full of random beads. I know. D Danielle is saying you love this. I know. Marianne loved that. I know. Um, if Patrick goes in in the course, there's like, I don't know, almost two hours of all the different things of, you know, detailed instruction if you want to embed. If not, we just wanted to, if you're interested, which I think we all are, that's why we wanted to show you this. Because when people think concrete at first, they're like, eh. All right, yeah. I forget. What are you doing here, Patrick? This is showing a little bit of the colorant and how I use the colorant. This is that tiny little scoop. And, you you know, you don't need too, too much of these. But what I found out is sometimes I need a little, sometimes I need a lot more. And if I had a scoop like this, what I could do is I could keep track and I could write down the formula. Now here, I'm just kind of willy nilly sort of pouring things in and just seeing how, how things are working. And, you know, I'm not really measuring. And you can certainly do it that way as well. Uh, the thing to know is that you just need to make sure that the whole entire, uh, everything that you know the concrete and the waters and the and the colorant is all incorporated together and uh, you know make it nice and smooth here i know that um danelle is asking where'd you get those tiny scoops i ended up just using the end part of the wooden stick worked wine too yeah i did that too and i ended up um uh, i ended up needing a more accurate thing to you did measure. okay only for my formulas. If I'm just experimenting around, you know, yeah. What, you can what are those for, those little spoons, Patrick? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, there's some sort of a, a scientific measuring. Right. Yeah, right. I got them on Amazon and they were, you know, relatively inexpensive. Probably if you uh, just look up scientific measuring spoons. So here, I just put a little bit of concrete down first in the bezel, and that's going to raise that bezel cup up a little bit. Cool Tools has these bezels as well, um, you know, as well, so you can do that. And then uh, basically just fill the whole thing up. 
Now, what happens is, is that when you put the concrete in first, the paper is going to start to absorb some of the water. And so by putting that, um, putting that first little dab down first, it starts to absorb the water. It'll slightly start to harden a little bit, and that'll allow me to press the, the bezel cup into the concrete without it going all the way down. Mm-hmm. And so that raises it up just a tiny little bit. Uh, it's really easy uh, to make it too deep, which I did make that mistake, and I'll show you what happens. Uh, and just remember that you're going to need to set whatever you're putting in there and uh, that bezel cup needs to you know, come in a little bit. So you need to make sure you have enough room to make sure that you can operate. You can close up the bezel cup. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now with metal clay, what we usually do is we usually drill holes in the bottom of our bezel cup so that it aids with that mechanical connection. And that's not really necessary here. And concrete is really, really sticky when you, when you start to embed stuff in it. Yeah. And so you go on from here and, you know, you let this dry. You can see how durable this is, right? Yep, yep. Just dropped it. And I left that, purposely left that in there so you guys can see that it's, you know, it's yeah. not as, it's it's pretty forgiving. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I mean. It's a fun one to play with. Yeah. Make any adjustments. But remember, this whole time it's hardening. So you have to get those adjustments at the very, very beginning. Now I'm just checking the bottom just to make sure that the bottom is intact. And there I go. So that just needs to dry. Lisa has a good question about um, any other obalescence or metallic that may be added. I, yes, I, I added in my ring video, you'll see at the end, but what else were you gonna say, Patrick? Yeah, mica, mica powder, the same that mica you would powder, yeah. for you know, polymer clay and a lot of other things, but that would be really good. Yeah. Uh, and then here you see the bezel. Now you'll notice, I just wanted to show this one because you'll notice that this is the first one that I did on the top side right there, how the concrete goes all the way almost to the top. So I needed to make that, make that adjustment so that I could actually, uh, you know, set the stone properly. So I, that's what I, I ended up doing is just having to redo it. So lesson learned. Next. Right. Right. Please. That, that, that's how we learn. It's not so bad. And that's blown up a million times big. It, yeah. You could probably still wear it and be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the stone that's in. I love the purple color. It's really. Yeah. Nice. It's no, it's up. it's so fun. I really do love it. Um, all right. And, so now this is a little video I threw in, Patrick. I just put it in before we started. Because Patrick got me all inspired and because like you, Lisa, I wanted to play with glitter and something. So I took the concrete and I added in, what did I add in Patrick? I showed you, I added in uh, mica pieces. Ah, crumbled. So, so where did you get the mica from? The crumbled mica? It's just in a jar that I had for my, um, like buying glitter. That's all that was. And, (laughs) um, Wait, here's one I'm, yeah, I did it in the pendant, but it was like, I happened to have it and it was just glitter with big pieces and it came out so cool. So, um, and here, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And there's so, so much fun to learn from the class. That's what, um, uh, if you click on the link for buying the class, you'll see that uh, and you'll have all kinds of fun stuff. Here is a picture of uh, what it looks like when you click the link to go get the kit over at Cool Tools. Uh, so there are all the colors, um, the sticks, the concrete, the little um, mixing cups. And then you'll see beneath it that you can get all of the uh, rings that you, if you want to make a ring. I just highly recommend making a ring first because it's a great way to just play around and start experimenting and then watch the whole course and um, see all the fun things you can do because it's really, really fun. Oh, and if you buy the course, uh, make sure that you use the... Uh, coupon code that's good for a week from all of you listening, Concrete 20. Uh, you can save money on the course. And uh, and it's fun. Uh, all right. So Donna said, is a sealant required? Um, required? No. But 
recommended? Probably yes. It's up to you. Anything that's, that is um, unsealed is, you know, going to be susceptible to oils and things like that, just like regular concrete would be. So you can put a sealant on top. What I've done is I've waxed it with Renaissance wax and I've not had mm. any problems doing mm. it that way. And if you do that, you could build up layers and you could even polish it. Um, and there's all, all sorts of things that you can do for surface treatments as well. Yeah. Uh, I love in the class, some of the surface treatments you came up with and the ombre look. I yes. love to ombre. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's so many fun looks that ring I showed you that I did is the simplest of it all. It was just finding happy glitter in my stash and go, Oh, I'll put this in. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.